Hi everyone, welcome to MCC's Live to You virtual programming with me, Jose Luis Garcia, your teaching artist who will guide you through the art of bookmaking. For today's video, we're going to expand on some of the techniques we learned in earlier videos to now start to incorporate some threading, so some binding using string thread or repurposed material. Uh, today's book form is going to be somewhat conventional and there's going to be some alternatives for those of you that don't have string. You can use a handy stapler in place. Today we're going to be looking at, as a culmination or as a big showdown, if you will, for our final event to not only learn about single signature books and how to kind of thread and create them, but also how to um, actually add and create a more complex or compound book where you can start to incorporate different things like accordion along with the single stitch pattern that we're going to explore today. So uh, I'm going to encourage in the spirit of our last video to use some of the inspiration that I provide to you as just the beginning. Remember, this book arts project should fit your needs. So if you're interested in exploring something like storytelling or writing, you can totally explore that along with your drawing or creative visual art. So to walk you through a bit about our book, so we're gonna create a single signature book. And in book arts, a single signature just refers to a series of pages folded in half. You might remember this when we did our accordion book previously, where we kind of line up corners and use the folded book or the folded page as the basis for our book. This time though, we're gonna punch in some holes using a handy hole puncher, maybe some adult or teenage muscles in your household, and then we're gonna use some nice string or an alternative that you might have lying around. We can kind of repurpose things from old clothes or we can purchase some yarns or even repurpose things from the grocery store. This was from one of my second grade students that created a kind of two page watercolor drawing and painting. One side has painting, the inside has a drawing as their very colorful interpretation of this single signature book. You might notice that there's this kind of bow feature that kind of um, that we'll use to actually tie our book together. So it's really cool because we're not really using any glue. We're just using hole punching and a threading technique that although may seem kind of complicated, I've done this project with students from grade as early as really um, first grade. You can even work with students in kindergarten, but you really need to be hands on and guide them but this isn't too complicated of a, of a stitch. Uh, this time I also included a piece of construction paper to add almost like a bold accent or spine. So depending on what colors you work with, you can really make a really nice, colorful, fun, unique design. Uh, you can see how both of them, even though they're different, uh, they take the kind of circular form or shape uh, into consideration in this book form. Uh, for today, I'm gonna kind of uh, suggest that you find any old photographs, pictures, print out pictures, draw um, family members, draw your extended family members like uh, pets, or any um, materials that you might want to create an album. Now we're going to cut out our drawings, paintings, photographs, and we're going to adorn them or kind of decorate them with a beautiful frame. You can see this kind of gold frame that I use a nice scallop scissor, so a fancy scissor, I'll show you in a bit, uh, to create these nice curves and angles. And on our single signature book, which we'll learn to make in a few minutes, uh, I actually started collaging or cutting and pasting with glue or tape uh, some of my album frames. So this might be an album of my, you know, my little pet dog. This is actually from a student of mine last year, Alexander. So I'm really glad that I can include uh, his work that wasn't part of our art show because of COVID-19. Same goes with this portrait over here of Jordan, one of my second grade students in that same class. So what's really nice about this single signature stitch is you can also combine it with different book forms that you might have already uh, encountered. For this one, this is something I did over in my undergraduate studies where I created an album of different plant types or plant um, that I found in my backyard. So I actually pressed down and instead of collaging with glue, I collage plant material like leaves and flowers with just a little bit of adhesive or glue 
to create my own kind of pattern or book form. And so you can see how with time some of the flowers changed, but depending on how pressed they were with no moisture, some of them look exactly like they did a couple years back. What's nice about this particular book form is that it's made up of three unique signatures and it's all bounded on this accordion spine. So I created these hardcover book um, boards or covers, but you can notice that the accordion is where this kind of expansive book arts magic happens. And if you kind of work through the book, it's almost like there's little sections. So imagine maybe one section is your mom, your dad, and maybe your siblings. So you could really break it into chapters and it's as simple as just sewing the same way we're gonna learn today onto an accordion so that you can get this really nice um, combination of book forms. And when it kind of, um, when it closes, you can really appreciate this accordion fold. Imagine now if it was with this bright kind of pop of color, I think there's so much opportunity in color. So for today's book, I'm gonna really encourage if you have available, to use some materials that you might not ordinarily use, whether it's bright colors or even um, your own drawing materials along with pictures from a camera. So in a few minutes, I'm gonna pull up a slide or um, a directions with different materials. But like always, I wanna walk you through and let you know what we'll be using for today. So we're definitely gonna be using string, which I've mentioned. So keep in mind that the color and texture of the string is gonna be noticeable in your book form. So you might wanna use a really bright, colorful string, like the yarn I'm using that's a green. You can also repurpose. Maybe your, uh, your parents or someone in your household is knitting a scarf or working with different sewing materials. So you can borrow some string from them. Just like there are materials, sometimes in the grocery store, like twine or gardening, which is like a brown string, any string really is up to you. You just wanna make sure you have plenty of it. You're also gonna need a hole puncher. There, are, uh, there is an alternative version where instead of using a hole puncher, we'll just use staples. So you can kind of skip out on the hole puncher and string, or if you don't have it, know that you can still make a single signature uh, album today. You'll just have to use, again, a stapler. Uh, along with your hole puncher and string, you're gonna need a scissor. Remember, safety scissors always work really well for our classes, and we're simply gonna use it just to cut the string, so we aren't gonna use it too much, unless you plan to really um, get creative with your collage techniques. Along with your scissor, you might wanna use some glue or tape. If you're looking to add the kind of creative spine or to really collage and cut and paste onto your book, then you're going to need some sort of adhesive, some stickiness to it. So you can either use a glue stick or tape, whatever suits your needs and whatever you have available. Definitely going to need your single signatures, your half folds of paper. They could be any size. Just make sure whatever colorful page you're going to use on the outside, that it's bigger than the page that uh, are going to be inside of your sketchbook or your journal, I'm sorry. Uh, so you can use colored pages, you could use blank pages, you could also combine different thickness. Maybe you want some watercolor paper along with some drawing paper. So you can use different materials inside of these journals or these albums. I always kind of interchange, especially thinking of uh, the video before this one where you learn to make those stab bound journals. So it's not to say that all of these book projects can overlap especially when you start seeing the possibilities in the different forms. Like, um, like I mentioned before, you can use some bright, colorful construction paper for your covers, or you can repurpose some uh, interesting photos or patterns. This is a vintage kind of retro aerobics and sports papers that I have. I'm also gonna suggest that you draw out some frames. We can directly with our safety scissor, cut these out, and then we'll get to put inside of them our different photos or pictures or drawings. But I think thinking of all the different possibilities with our frames, whether they're kind of uh, traditional conventional shapes like this kind of square or something a little fancy or a little creative, it's completely up to you. You might even be inspired by a particular frame in your house. 
And then, of course, we mentioned pictures, but I think drawings are probably more accessible to some of you. So maybe you want to find any incomplete drawings that you can add to your album and later on maybe collaborate with a sibling or a family member, almost like an interactive coloring book. Don't forget your drawing materials. Uh, you can use markers and you can use um, any um, material as long as it's suitable for your paper type. Remember, if you're using really thin paper, you're not gonna wanna use a Sharpie. You might wanna use something lighter like a highlighter, um, pencil or marker. So I hope you're really excited and you're already kind of brainstorming not only what materials you have available, but what kind of album you want to make. Remember, your album can be of plants. It could be of all the different interests. It could be almost like strolling in through an art gallery inside of your mind. Whatever you decide to do is going to turn out great. And I'm really excited in seeing this very simple yet um, interesting stitch be part of your book arts practice. So I'm going to pull up again all the materials that are suggested for this activity and give you a few seconds to go and retrieve them. And then we'll go ahead and we'll get started. For today's project, there's two components. We're going to start off with the first one, which is creating some photo frames for some of our drawings or photographs. So, a frame is typically where we would print out or put up our artwork in galleries and in museums. And what we're going to do is we're going to use either construction paper, some colored markers, some fancy scissors to cut out and make nice frames for our beautiful artwork. Later on, we'll use this same artwork to put it in our single signature little kind of photo album, or we can just call it an album. And it could be in the front cover or actually inside the pages as well. Using some construction paper, you can draw out different kinds of frames. Maybe you want to almost like an interior decorator. Come up with your own different versions. Maybe experiment with different shapes and different orientations, like horizontal kind of rectangles, vertical rectangles, squares. And start playing with different kinds of marks and textures you can get. You can also use fun creative safety scissors. This one has a zigzag pattern, so you can actually just work directly on your paper. I like using sometimes a combination of the two. And you want to be really patient when you're cutting to make sure that it's nice and even. If not, you can also pre-measure some things or some parts of it. That's what I did with this one. I started off by just cutting out a piece of construction paper. I added my drawing on top, or in this case, Jordan's drawing. And then I finally glued it on top of this nice, bright, complementary yellow for the purple. And then using the scissor like the one I just showed you, I was able to get this really nice frame kind of effect. Once you have a couple of frames ready, you can actually, um, group them together and start to kind of play with the order in which things go. Maybe this will look really great on the front cover. And maybe we want to add the dog at the very end. The fun thing about working with collage is that you can try different things out until you finally add some glue and kind of seal the deal. So using your construction paper, you can then also pre-cut some of your drawings or paintings. In this case, I'm going to use this little unicorn character again, created by Jordan. I'm gonna add only a little bit of glue um, until I figure out exactly where I wanna position it. If not, I might use a little bit of tape so that I can move it around and try different things. Once I find a nice spot, typically towards the center, I'm gonna go ahead and draw a nice kind of square rectangular shape, almost like a window. And then from here, I can start to connect some points to start to make it seem a little bit more three-dimensional or 3D. You can also work on shading, adding more color. Again, it's completely up to you. I like using a series of different construction, uh, construction paper colors to really play with color. But maybe you have to keep your book in black and white. 
and maybe create something like a, a coloring book like this drawing. You can also use a sheet of paper with some pre-cut shapes to start to adorn or decorate some of these pages. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut this out almost as like a little part of the decor, the decoration on that frame I just made. So I'm gonna go ahead and add a little bit of glue and this is collage, cutting and pasting. And you can also use magazines, maybe your favorite books and photographs of your family. Maybe you actually put together two different ones. What's really great then up here is you can actually um, create almost like an emblem. An emblem might have maybe some initials And in our case, we're going to do a little nod to MCC Live to You. So you can continue making as many frames as you want. Just remember, whatever frame that you're designing, you want it to be smaller than the book you're making. If not, you might want to consider punching holes into it and using it as your actual front cover. Now we're going to move on to step two in this project. For step number two, you're going to house a couple sim single signatures, some folded papers in half, inside of a construction paper. So this will be whatever you want your cover to be. Remember, you can also add that detail like the last video to add a nice pattern spine. So if you want to add, again, a pattern spine and use that fancy scissor or in regular scissor and cut it into a cool pattern, it's up to you. For the demonstration, we're gonna keep it a simple sheet of construction paper. And if you don't have construction paper, you can leave the front cover of your book blank and then just draw or design a cover. I went ahead and I already pre-punched some holes, three, but this time I'm actually doing it on the fold so that half of the hole punch comes out. This is different to the last video. Even though we're aligning it in a similar position, this one again is off onto the actual folded spine. In our stab binding, we actually punch the hole completely on the book. Once you go ahead and punch those holes, I'm gonna reinforce them a little. Sometimes it takes a couple tries to make sure that the hole's big enough to work with. Since you are gonna do some threading with your yarn, you wanna make sure that you don't have a teeny, teeny, tiny entry for that. These look about right. This gives us plenty of wiggle room as we start using our thread. With all of the holes and all the pages positioned, I'm gonna drop my book for a second as I go and get some yarn. This time I'm gonna use the yarn about three times the size of this spine. So here we have one, two, and three. Typically the more we have, the better it is for us when we're working, but you really don't need too much string as long as you're precise. So using my yarn again, if it starts raveling, you can kind of wind it back up. I'm gonna hold all of my pages together and I'm gonna start in through the center. I'm gonna come all the way out about the end of my book. So I have a tail. I'm gonna leave this tail on the outside because I want my bow to actually remain outside of my book. So we're gonna go ahead and flip back to in the inside of our book. Grabbing the opposite end of your string, you're gonna visit one of the neighbor holes. It could be the top or the bottom, it's up to you. Or if you're seeing the book horizontally, it could be left or right. I'm gonna go ahead and go towards the left one. Each time I go threading, I wanna then flip my book in the opposite way. Now we're at the cover. Again, we're gonna leave this little tail here and I'm gonna go and jump to the opposite hole. So you're not gonna go into the center you're gonna keep it going so that you can thread the empty hole. While holding my pages together, I'm gonna to go ahead, jump, and then I'm gonna go ahead and flip it back inside. Almost like our last book arts project, the string is letting us know where it needs to go next. And in this case, quite simply, we're gonna go back out. 
Once you're here, you're probably going to have one side that might be longer. As long as you haven't tied a knot yet, you can go ahead and straighten them out a bit. If not, you can also trim the excess later with a scissor. I want to make sure that I pull in opposite directions, one towards the left, one towards the right, and that I have this string traveling down the center with some space. Now I'm going to go ahead and tie a knot to secure it in place. So that's why you want to make sure that you have some nice tension. I sometimes do one or two knots, and then I adorn it almost like tying your shoes. I know when my second graders use this kind of book format, they really spend a couple minutes on this part. But for those of you that are a little bit older, um, this is quite simple. I also like to line it up so that the string falls within these holes that we punched. So if you wanted to do this on an accordion spine, you just make sure that each fold is facing opposite one another. And then you'll have that same effect like the book I showed you earlier. This is a really versatile uh, book form. And if you don't have string or hole punch, you can simply staple. If you have a long enough staple, you can actually just come across. If not, you might have to staple a bit of the spine. It's all right, whatever materials you have, get innovative, get creative. The same way we don't judge a book by its cover, we don't judge your creativity by your materials. I wanted to take a moment and thank all of you that joined us for all four videos. I wanna congratulate you on officially becoming a book artist and hope that this is just a beginning for you in your exploration of your creativity and book form. Make sure to keep following MCC Live to you for any updates to their virtual programming. And I hope that one day we see each other again. I'm Jose Luis Garcia and I'm logging off. Bye. I'm proud to be part of MCC's Live to You virtual programming to offer you cultural arts at your fingertips. This series is where community and culture converge in a socially distant, free way to connect with the arts. MCC is staying connected virtually with creative, educational, and inspiring cultural programming for everyone. See their monthly schedule and be sure to subscribe to their YouTube channel at Miramar Cultural. Watch the schedule, keep up with the videos, or at your own leisure. Be sure to tag them when you post your amazing artwork. We look forward to seeing it.